How to halt homegrown terrorism. The Prevent Strategy was introduced by New Labour, its stated aim to target all threats of violent extremism. But many Muslims have long felt it targets their communities. Critics describe the strategy as a surveillance tool, arguing it fosters discrimination and inhibits legitimate expression. Partly in response, the government announced a review of the PREVENT programme in 2019. It was hoped that the review would address the persistent criticisms of PREVENT, but it's been dogged by delays. And now, nearly two years on since it was announced, more than 500 Muslim organisations, representing the very communities the review was meant to reassure, have announced that they'll be boycotting it. This in response to the government's decision to appoint a chair who many fear will be more rubber stamp than reviewer. William Shawcross formerly headed the charities watchdog. The Home Office told us he was selected in a full and open process. Although some of the signatories to the boycott have always opposed Prevent, it also includes hundreds of grassroots organisations who have engaged with the programme. The organisations say they're boycotting the review because of previous controversial remarks William Shawcross has made, including describing Islam as one of the greatest, most terrifying problems of our future. They also point to the fact that there was a huge increase in statutory investigations into Muslim charities during his time at the Charities Commission. He's on record as having spoken um, in a tone and content that is highly dubious and problematic. But I think also it raises broader questions around the way that the complaints and the fears um, uh, around, uh, made uh, by the Muslim community around the prevent strategy have been handled by the government. Dr Rizwan Sabir is a signatory to the boycott. Why am I being silent, security sir? In 2008, he was arrested by counter-terrorism officers for downloading an Al-Qaeda training manual as part of his PhD research, a manual that anyone could have bought through bookshops. Nottinghamshire Police later agreed to pay him £20,000 in an out-of-court settlement. It's experiences like his, says Dr Sabir, that have made some communities critical. Isn't it true that whoever was picked to lead this review would have attracted controversy? This policy, of course, is a way of stopping terrorism before it happens, and that in inherently relies upon a very complex system of surveillance and information around who is a potential terrorist that can be essentially preemptively dealt with. The Muslim community has felt quite criminalised and, and constructed as inherently dangerous, like a fifth column almost. In a statement, William Shawcross told us, I approach this review in a spirit of collaboration. He went on, as a writer and journalist, I've attempted to deal head-on with the thorny moral and legal issues that emerged as the West responded to the threat of Islamist terrorism. This has led to some of my views being misrepresented or misinterpreted. And on his time as head of the Charities Commission, he said, I'm proud of what we did to help protect Muslim charities from exploitation by ISIS and other extremist organisations during the Syrian conflict. Should the government have appointed someone who would have been less controversial so that people had more faith in the process? I think the reality is whoever was selected for this job, there was going to be some controversy. I think some of this is, is noise and obfuscation because some people... Some activists don't want the Prevent Review to conclude. The government has acknowledged that their response to terrorism depends on the cooperation of all communities. They told us they encourage anyone who has a view on Prevent to engage with the independent review. Darshna Sonny, Channel 4 News.